welcome to another pregnancy update. Um, this is going to be like a third trimester update, kind of getting you up to date with where I'm at, um, up to about 35 weeks. So, um, if you haven't seen my first trimester and second trimester updates, you can go and watch those to get all caught up. Um, but basically my third trimester started um, just kind of feeling the same symptoms I was in the later part of my second trimester. A lot of back pain, uh, right hip pain, pelvic pain. Um, mm -hmm. Sometime between 24 and 26 weeks is really when that pain set in. And at times it is excruciating. Like, it's it gets pretty bad and um, makes me a little nervous for delivery. Um, I already feel like my hips are breaking. I feel like my pelvic bone could like snap in half and I can barely walk at times, barely stand up at times. Thinking about going through labor, um, already in that much pain has me a little worried. Um, but I am hoping with the birth of this baby comes some pain relief. Um, besides that ailment, I feel okay. Um, obviously that's kind of a big thing, um, just to be in so much pain all the time. It really makes things pretty difficult, especially like lifting Milo and things like that. Um, but it's not unbearable. Like it kind of comes and goes. It's the worst at night, especially when I'm trying to roll from one side to the other. And when I wake up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, when I wake up in the morning, if I'm sitting down for a while and then I stand up, that's kind of when the worst pain is. And I think there's probably some sciatica pain as well because it'll kind of like shoot down all the way down my right side. And it's very localized. It's, it's on my right side. My left side doesn't really hurt at all. Um, some of the pain kind of radiates, but it's mostly the right side and then obviously the pelvic bone, which is kind of straight across the front. Um, but as far as other symptoms go, that's pretty much it uh, for the third trimester. Um, you know, I haven't had as, as many symptoms as my first pregnancy. This pregnancy, pregnancy feels just as hard, if not harder, um, but in just in a different way. And it's hard to explain because I go back and think about all the things that happened with my first pregnancy. At this point in my first pregnancy, I was out of control swollen. I don't even think I realized how swollen I was um, until after I had Milo and I kind of went back to like normal and I was like, whoa, I was really swollen. I mean, my leg was like a trunk all the way down. Uh, my feet, I mean, I couldn't fit in any shoes, none, not even flip flops. My face, I remember my face being swollen. My face is a little round. That's probably just pregnancy weight gain. Yay for that. Um, but I'm really not swollen almost at all. Sometimes my hands and feet will get a little swollen, um, but it goes away and it doesn't stay. So that's good. Um, that was pretty miserable feeling. Um, like I couldn't even like wear leggings without them like digging into my legs. My socks, my ankles would like swell over my socks. It was very bad. Um, and that was due to the preeclampsia that I didn't know I had. Um, also another thing that I don't have this time that I had the first time was, um, I don't know if any of you remember who've seen my pregnancy updates with my first baby, but my hands and arms would fall asleep every night, um, to the point where it, it really hindered my sleep. It was very uncomfortable. I would wake up and I'd feel like I had arthritis. I couldn't even make a fist with my hands. Um, it was between the swelling and the tingling and the numbness. It was pretty awful. So I don't have any of that this pregnancy and I'm very grateful for that. But it just seems like I've traded one thing in for another. Instead I have the pain, the back pain, the pelvic pain, the hip pain. Um, which I probably prefer over the swelling and arm numbness, but nonetheless, it is bothersome. Um, I have had a few little scares in my third trimester as far as my blood pressure 
and kind of getting worried about preeclampsia. Um, I'm a pretty high preeclampsia watch since I did have it in my first pregnancy and it did go undiagnosed uh, for several, several weeks. Um, so my doctor's pretty diligent this time. I have a different, a different doctor, different hospital and everything. Um, very diligent about, she's running blood panels and urine checks and blood pressure checks and um, she's very on top of it. So I, I feel comforted by that. But there's been a few times where my blood pressure has kind of gotten high and I've gotten worried. Um, and just this, just a week ago, uh, or a few days ago, uh, it got to the point where I felt like I needed to call my doctor and she said to go ahead and come in and get some monitoring done. Um, and my blood pressure was like 141 over 95, which was like the highest it had gotten. And normally, normally my blood pressure in this pregnancy has been around 115 over 70 up to 120 over 80, but fairly low, normal, um, just with a few spikes here and there. And I had some swelling and I had the, the blood pressure and I just felt off and I felt yucky. So I went in and I did a non-stress test. Uh, baby did great. His heart rate was great. Um, they took my blood pressure for about an hour and a half, like every 15 minutes. And it was a little elevated, like 120s, 130s, over 80s. Um, but it wasn't anything like to be super concerned about. They did a PHI lab and a urine analysis and everything came back negative or on track, normal numbers. Nothing indicates protein in my urine or poor kidney function or liver function or anything like that. I also did a 24 hour urine analysis uh, that day, started it that day. Um, which if you don't know what that is, you basically have to collect every drop of pee for 24 hours and keep it in your fridge. Um, which is not that much fun, especially when you wake up in the middle of the night and you have to go pee and you have to like collect it and like put it in the fridge and then by the time you're done you're like awake and then it's hard to fall asleep. Um, but luckily it was just one day and that came back. I had like almost zero protein in my urine. So um, that was really great um, and reassuring. And ever since then I felt a lot better. My blood pressure has been down. So I think a lot of it is anxiety. And that's definitely something that I've had this pregnancy that I did not experience with my last, um, at least as much. Obviously I had normal anxieties, but um, I, I had a very positive attitude in my first pregnancy. I really thought everything was going to go great and I was going to have like this amazing birth, which did not happen. Um, but this time around, I think I'm just aware like things can go south very fast. Um, and that's what happened with my first delivery. So as I get further along, I start to worry about getting preeclampsia, obviously. Um, and I start to worry about, you know, the delivery going bad or having to have a C-section or getting a blood clot. I mean, there's just so many things to worry about. And it's definitely taking its toll. And I'm trying to stay positive and calm and just know that my doctor knows what she's looking for. She's running all the right tests. And I don't have preeclampsia yet, and that is a very good thing. Um, so hopefully, as uh, the weeks continue, I will still just kind of be able to keep myself calm and um, not freak myself out again and have to go to the hospital to get monitored. Um, I feel a little silly, but at the same time, I don't want what happened last time to happen this time, which is I ignored the fact that I had all these symptoms that pointed to preeclampsia, um, and I felt terrible, and it went undetected, it went, got brushed under the rug, and I, I probably had been living with preeclampsia for a month or two, and that's scary um, to think that something terrible could have happened because... I was not getting the proper care that I should have and that I was not being um, listened to like I should have. So this time I'm definitely taking every precaution and I definitely would rather go to the hospital a few extra times to be monitored to make sure everything's okay instead of just, you know, hoping it's okay. <sighs>
but I um, am ready for this baby to come. I I haven't really been able to enjoy this pregnancy I, like I enjoyed Milo's pregnancy, even though I was just as miserable. There was, I just enjoyed it more because it was so exciting being my first and trying so long and I had nothing to really compare it to and I there's a lot of things looking back that I didn't realize weren't normal or right um, and this time I'm more educated about what pregnancy should be like um, but I, I do love this baby and I'm so excited to meet him and um, just thinking about holding a newborn again is super super exciting to me and I just I just want to enjoy the baby because I really can't enjoy this pregnancy until I know he's out and safe um, I just keep having that feeling like something's gonna go wrong and it's gonna be an emergency duck induction or an emergency c-section <sighs> and I just want it to be over so I can like be calm about it okay so as far as stats really quick I they've they changed my original due date. It was November 21st, and then they changed it to the 24th. So, I don't really know. I'm due sometime around the 21st to 24th. Um, I'm not really sure exactly which due date to go off of. I want to go off the due date of the 21st, which puts me at 36 weeks today. Um, if not, in three more days, I'll be 36 weeks. The due date doesn't really matter too much as I probably will be having a scheduled induction somewhere around 39 weeks. Um, so I'm a, I'm a few days later or earlier. Probably doesn't really change the date that I will be induced. And the reason I'm being induced is because I'm on blood thinners. Um, it's possible I could go into labor on my own before that and my doctor is fine with that. Um, but as I get further along, obviously the chance of going into labor on my own increases and having a faster labor increases and they need to get me off the blood thinners before I actually deliver. So I've got about three to four weeks max left and um, it's, it's getting close to the end <laughs> and I cannot wait. So um, at 36 weeks pregnant, I have gained 36 pounds. I'm on track to gain about 40. Um, I gained a lot more with my first. The last several weeks of my pregnancy with my first, I was gaining like five pounds a week. Um, and that was all swelling, all water weight because like several, just a couple days after I delivered, I like lost 30 pounds like instantly. Um, and it was after they gave me like a diuretic that I just like peed and peed and peed and peed and like lost 30 pounds. Um, I think that pretty much covers it as far as um, kind of getting caught up with my pregnancy. Um, I definitely am going to do another update next week because I'll be 30, I have my 36 week appointment, they're doing a, they're going to start cervical checks um, and I never had a cervical check with my first pregnancy so I'm kind of excited about that just to see if there's any progression from week to week. So. I'm on weekly appointments and I definitely want to keep everything documented these last few weeks just to look back on. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys really soon in my next video which is what's in my hospital bag the second time around. So I will see you then. Bye. forgot to add this in there. Here is the belly shot at 36 weeks. Um, I feel huge. I do. I'm definitely bigger than I, than I was with Milo. Although the doctor says, feeling around my stomach, that the baby does not feel that large. So, the belly feels big. I definitely have some stretch marks. Wonderful stretch marks on my belly. I also have marks all over from my shots that I have to give myself. Um, and some of this is just from laying down. Those are not stretch marks right there. That's from laying down. So, this is the baby at 36 weeks and I don't know how I could get any bigger. Uh -huh.